Good evening, everyone. Tonight is to, uh, Monday, March 12th. Um, I'm, I hope everybody has had a great week. I haven't been on in a couple of weeks. I was off traveling um, first to the FIBC Summit that some of you I know saw that I was at and then off with doing some family stuff. So it's great to be back and it's great to be hosting tonight. Um, we have muted everybody, but this is a um, interactive webinar. This is an interactive meeting. So definitely feel free to unmute yourself and share. And I'm going to ask some questions that I would love for people to uh, be involved with and share with. Um, and also use the chat on the side. So if you want to throw something into the chat where we can all see that, that is fantastic. Um, and, you know, we'll try to, hopefully Melinda will help me feed, you know, weed through the chat and, and answer people's things. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, Melinda, if you want to unmute yourself and um, start with some of our takeaways from tonight's awesome coach Zoom that was before this in the company. Sure. So uh, every Monday night before, uh, for anybody who wasn't able to attend, every single Monday night before our Goal Getters Team Huddle is the coach call that is run by Dr. Anderson, Dr. A, and it is a great call every single week. There's always a different topic. And this week was uh, two different new globals that were celebrating their new rank up. And what I love about that is that they have such fresh advice to share that some of it we haven't heard before. And even when you've heard it before, it's always nice to hear it again from someone new and someone a lot of times we haven't seen. So there were two, there was Larry and Z who were so cute. And then Tony, Tony really got me. Didn't cry, but she was pretty impressive. But, but my big takeaway was actually Jamil from Jamil Frazier who introduced Tony. Jamil is an integrated presidential, presidential director. And he said something that really, really stuck out to me. He said, be open to being coached strongly, being, um, being coachable. And that's something that Tony reiterated, but staying co connected to your mentorship and really listening when, to your, when your mentors tell you something, because this isn't about recreating the wheel. We have, there's this great system that's, again, a silver spoon handed over to us. When you follow these simple action steps and, and when you put them to work, you know, this, they are very simple. It's how much work you put into getting them done. So when you connect with your mentorship, when you listen to your mentorship, and when you're okay being coached, when you're okay getting feedback, that to me means that you're really listening and there's no ego involved. It means that you can actually take the things that, that you want to work on and fix them because you have somebody else who's able to listen to you and hear the way you're speaking, hear the way you do a health assessment, hear any of those things and really be able to get that feedback and then go forward with your business. And that's, I mean, I have a whole bunch more, but I think I, it's good to stick to one. <laughs> so that was the one that really connected with me the most. Uh, thank you, Melinda. Does anybody else have any quick takeaways that they want to throw out and, and put in there? Feel free to unmute yourself and, you know, we'd love to hear them. If anybody has anything else? Okay. okay, so we'll go on. If you think of some, oh, Alana, did you have something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say the, la the very last thing, um, and I repeated it to someone already, is when um, she had said the obstacle is the way. And, you know, a lot of people may be having struggles this month, you know, with Pesach and, or, you know, Passover and people pushing off orders or, you know, or whatever the individual situation is, that sometimes there are obstacles and that just should make us push ourselves further and realize, you know, if, you know, everyone hits an obstacle, but just what are we going to do about it? What action steps, you know, get with your mentorship team and what action steps can you create for yourself so that, you know, obstacle you're able to to move past and, you know, succeed to your, whatever your individual goal is. Awesome. And Rosanna, Rosanna, you want to speak up yours that you put in, in the chat was great. You want to speak up real quickly? Uh, just when Tony was talking, she said that you need to do something outside of your comfort zone daily if you expect to grow. And that just, that was one of the things that I made sure to write down because it really stuck out to me. Maybe it's something that I just needed to hear myself, but it's, it's right. If you want to grow, you have to be doing things that is just, just outside of what you're doing. Regularly. And one of the things that I personally love about all of these things is that they are not just Optavia, about Optavia. I mean, doing something outside of your comfort zone every day 
should be in your life. Doing these things, you know, the obstacle is the way. That is life. That is, you know, those are the things, how we grow and how we become better people. So there's so much. I love these coach calls because not only do I get stuff out of it as growing my business, but I get stuff out of it really personally. Um, and, and how am I going to grow as, as a person? Um, and Sandy said, what, what do you want and what are you willing to do to get there, right? So all of these things actually really tie very, very nicely into um, what we're going to talk about tonight. So I have, I'm going to pull up, if I can share my screen, hold on, technical difficulties for a second. Um, PowerPoint and Zoom do not always go so nicely hand in hand. Um, so give me one second. Um, Gonna share it all for a second, but I want to put it into play mode. Okay, so tonight we are going to talk about the five and one for growing your business. Um, we all know the five and one. Most of us did the five and one on our program, um, so we all know what that is. And in and we talk about five in one in a lot of different ways in the business aspects. I know when people are talking about growing to senior, you know, growing to, to senior coach, you want five clients and one spare. When you're growing to ED, you want, you know, five senior coaches and one spare and those kinds of things. So we're thinking on that. But I really want to think in ourselves personally, growing as a coach for a five in one for your business. So we're actually going to first start with the one. Because I think that this is really important, and without this one, the other five don't, don't mean anything. So that number one is about you. You as a person. You need to know what your plan is, your plan on program, your plan as a coach, your plan on what you're going to do in your life. It just doesn't, like I said before, with, that I love about these other coach calls, is it's not just about um, you as a Coach, it's, you know, these, these are all ways to grow in ourselves. And so really knowing what you're doing for you, make a decision and then stick to it when it's your decision. Um, I was actually having an amazing conversation with somebody earlier today and we were talking about this, about making a decision. And once you've made that decision, it's done. There's no option in it. You have made a decision to do something. If you don't make a decision to do it and you still have other options out there, those are choices. And there's a very different, those are di very different mindsets. So. Um, the quote that came to me was, you know, about a decision. A real decision is measured by the fact that you've taken a new action. If there's no action, you haven't truly decided. So every one of us sitting here in this call, and hopefully every one of us, everyone who is watching this in a recording, has made a decision to become a coach. We all made that decision. It wasn't a choice. It wasn't, but we made a decision. We took an, we took an action to do this. And so what each of us choose to do within that decision is going to be very different. My, my ro road as a coach may be different than Melinda's and different than Alana's and different than Rosanna's. And these are the people that I'm looking at in the side of my fingers. <laughs> I'm calling out names, but my decision and how I, how I run my business is going, could be very different than how each others, but I made a decision. And so then it's my decision to stick with it and run with it. So I want to ask a few questions and I hope, I hope everybody brought some paper and, and a pen because we're going to do some, a little bit of writing down. Um, the first question that I want you to take a minute to think about, and we've talked about goals before, but really with this decision to be a coach, what is your goal? What are your top three goals? What are you trying to achieve? And I want you to, everybody to take a minute and really think about it. What are those goals? And write those down. I can only see a few of you, but as you get them written down, if you can sort of wave and I see Melinda, I see Alana, I see Mordechai, I see Rosanna, I see Hannah. Okay, so I see a couple of you guys, those that I see are starting to wave. So we're going to go on to the next one. If you haven't finished writing them down, you can. We've got a couple, a couple more things. The second thing, the big question is why did you become a coach? What, what drove you to make the decision to become a coach? And then the third thing, and this is 
a little bit more difficult for people, but picture your life in five years. And I know that's really hard because if you had told me two years ago where I would be today, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. But picture your life in five years. What are things, and this doesn't have to have anything to do with business, what do you want in your life in five years? This could be that you want to take your family on some amazing trip. This could be that you... I don't know. It, it, could be, it can be anything. It does not have to be business related. It doesn't have to be that you want to be integrated presidential. It, it, says not, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything about business, but what do you want in your life in, in five years? I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Now, going back to those questions, as you guys finish writing them, I'd love it if somebody can speak up and tell me, what is it that you want in five years? Anybody? What's something that you wrote down on that piece of paper? You can unmute yourself. And I can tell you, I'm going to, if you don't answer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that. Yes. Who was that? Yeah, I said, in five years, I want to be able to have more kids, and I want to be financially stable. OK. So put yourself, close your eyes for a second and envision yourself five years from now with more kids, okay, and financially stable, okay? Think about that for a minute. What did you do to make that happen? Tell us. Um, here, did I mute, did I unmute? You're fine, you're unmuted, you're fine. I think uh, what we're doing now, getting healthy, and resetting hormones and just doing what we're doing is helping us get what we're doing to, to get to the point where we can have more kids naturally and as far as financially stable just working the plan and 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 getting clients and and people and spreading the word and hopefully that'll impact okay and i and you're you guys are brand new so i'm sort of putting you so you're, you know this is great well, and so i know you're just learning uh, for those of you all who don't know, Becky and Noam are just brand new coaches. They're just, be they're just starting the program. They're just becoming brand new coaches. And I'm really excited that Becky stepped up to share this because this is awesome. So Becky, think about it for a minute. Out of the little bit that you've learned so far about being a coach, what do you think those steps are going to be to do that? Um, I think just being authentic, like you, we've talked about, everyone's reiterated that over and over and just living it and, and just it's going to catch on fire that way. I, I really feel like it's going to be contagious because everybody wants to be healthy. It's not, it's not a big secret. Everybody in their life is searching for that. So now that we know the secret and we know how to do it, it's just a matter of, of being real and living it and, and being by example, showing it to everyone else that we come in contact with. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Does Noam have anything else in there that he wants to share? <laughs> I see you oh, looking up at him. He's over there. Do you have anything you want to share? Uh, yeah. My, my dreams are your dreams. Obviously, like, I would, like, this Can you hear him? Mm -hmm. But I, I see myself, like, the, the, the how does that happen is supporting you. And, like, helping you. Because I know if I can get you to your dream, then I will naturally follow. Who's going to jump on for the ride? <laughs> That's All good. Right. That's good. Great. Can somebody else? Thank you, Becky. That was awesome. Um, can somebody else pop in and share what do they see in five years? Melinda, I'm going to call you out. Always happy to be called out. Really, nobody else wants to share? Then, do you guys, did you write down something that you want where you see yourself in five years? Did you write it down? Anybody want to share? I see, I see somebody going like this and I'm curious if that person wants to, the nice big pretty smile on her face wants to share what you wrote down. Listen, I won't force anybody to, but. To be successful and, and feel successful. Okay. And, I, and so put yourself five years from now. What, how did you do that? Uh, <clears throat> goals, the way I was, have been taught for uh, the last uh, almost 40 years at this point, about 35 years, is step-by-step -step processes, short-term goals, mid-term mid -term goals, 
long-term goals, which are also could be called dreams. Um, five years is a very uh, midterm goal. Um, uh, being uh, my age of 52 years old, <laughs> uh, I'm probably uh, hopefully in the middle of my life, but I don't know. But uh, we'll say I'm towards the last 20 years of my life. So uh, five years from now, I would be 57 years old. And whatever it means to anybody, but for me specifically, because you asked to feel successful uh, or to be successful is to feel successful. And that could be a, a vast, I know that's a very generic or general uh, terms that I wrote. And I get that because that can mean anything to anybody. Uh, but to me, um, it means to be happy and content with my accomplishments, what I have done, what, where I am at that point in life. Uh, and clearly, Optavia really is um, health. The, 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 the health is, is, is been one of my, um, uh, one of my I don't, uh, aspirations, um, uh, whether it be uh, my, by, by food, the food that I eat, the exercising, and, 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 you know, everything that goes with it. I know there's like six different categories within Optivia at this point. I'm pretty new at this, okay? But um, it, everything that I've heard at this point, for the most part, really does sit well with what I've been taught in the past. Uh, so looking forward for the next five years, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling on a little bit, but looking forward for the next five years is taking what I've learned from the past, incorporating everything I'm learning currently with Optavia and using Optavia and exploiting <laughs> everything I get from Optavia to get to where uh, I will feel content because quite to be blunt, I'll just put this out there right now. Okay. I've, uh, people have called me yo-yo. Okay. Uh, I, I've lost the weight. I know how to lose the weight, and maybe not. Keep breaking up, or is it my okay? I think you're freezing. Can't hear, Can't you. hear you. Yep. Mordechai, I'm going to go ahead and mute you because it's, it's totally breaking up when we can't hear busy, you. That's when I get lazy. It's cold, uh, getting those bad old habits again of not eating right, for example. Uh, not exercising. Great, thank you. I don't know. Um, I we missed I part of that. I, this is. May I say something, Leslie? Yep, absolutely. I wasn't going to say anything, but the two people you just heard are two people that I've had the privilege to help get able to start getting started, and it's awesome. Okay, what I just heard was changing people's lives and people who really want to change their life. So what I'm looking for in the next five years is to find a whole bunch of people like Mordecai and and like like Becky and Noam who who want to follow the program change your life and my job is to help them and help get you and other people to help them so that we can get them to where they want to be in their lives and truly change their lives and change the lives of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of people because i help people like these guys go out and and, and do thousands hundreds or thousands of people so that's that's where i want to be and of course i want to make financial freedom out of this too i'd like to have make some money out of it but that's the side issue the real issue is people like these two you just heard awesome great thank you thank you thank you does anybody else before we go on to the next part want to want to share what one of their goals for five years from now Melinda, you shared something with me really good before. before we were yeah, talking so earlier. I'll share. I wanted some other people to share too, because I can always share. Um, so for me, I see myself in five years still being a health coach. And for me, that's a really big deal because, I mean, food blogging for me is something that I've done for seven years and it still shocks me that I'm still doing it. Just because I've always gone from like the same way that he, Mordecai was saying that he's a yo-yo. With it, he was yo-yo with his his diet. I found that there I would start doing something and then I would get bored and stop and and it would go on and on and on. And I think it was because it wasn't anything I was ever passionate about. And I found something that I'm passionate about. So for me, I see myself in five years still being a health coach. Um, and a big part of it is is that passion and keeping that passion going. And gosh, Mark, when you when you spoke, your the fire like just 
exudes out of you. And that's what I want for myself too. I want people to see how much I love it because when I love it as much as I do, when I know what Optivia has done for me, people will see that and people can grab, will gravitate towards that. And I want the kind of people to gravitate towards me just the same way that you said it, Mark, because those are the kind of people that, I mean, I want to help everybody, but those are the people that I want to work with and I want to be in, in literally in business with. And that's what's going to keep me coaching in five years and well beyond that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I want people to really continue to think about this because it's not, I mean, everybody here that just mentioned was mentioning business goals, but there is so much more to all of this and really dreaming big and figuring out what's going to be in your future and then, and then working backwards as to how to get to it. Um, and actually, Dr. A did this, this whole scenario with us when I was at the FIBC summit two weeks ago where he, he did this. We all sat down and we wrote out our goals. Where do we see ourselves in five years? And he picked somebody from the group and took her up and said, okay, where do you see yourself? And she stood there and she told, you know, she said, these are the things. And she wanted to be able to give her kids certain experiences. And she wanted to be able to do certain things that really didn't have to do with her business. But because of her business success, she was then in a financial place to be able to do things that she couldn't be. And so then he, so he, you know, she said these things. And so he walked her forward a handful of steps and he said, okay, you're there now. What did you do to get there? What were those steps? What happened in those five years? And it was a whole long process. And it was really something that I have personally have been thinking a lot about since I was there. What are those steps? I know where I want to be in five years. What are the steps that I need to take to get there? And so those are the things that I really want each one of you thinking about. And like I said, it doesn't have to be about coaching. It can be about anything, about how you're going to get there and then working backwards and building those goals. So the next part of our, of of the presentation, we're going to talk about really building that business so you can, if that is how you want to use those to get there, that this is how we can do it. So I'm going to share my screen again, um, hopefully. Um, get my PowerPoint started again. Okay, so the next part um, is the first thing. There's, there are five things as your five. The number one thing top before anything else comes on is be an awesome coach okay if you're not an awesome coach your business isn't going to grow right you're helping your clients you're inspiring your clients your clients are going to send you referrals everybody's going to grow so I want to open it up and and ask what does it mean to you to be an awesome coach we're all sitting here so we all probably feel like we have pretty awesome coaches ourselves so what what does it mean to be an awesome coach? Go ahead and unmute yourself because I can't, I can only see a few people. Um, or you can type it in the chat and Melinda, if you can see the chat because I can't see it when I'm full screen, if you can read out what people are putting in the chat. What does it mean to you to be an awesome coach? Listen to my customers, whoever they may be, and help them, guide them to reach whatever their particular goals are. Awesome. I agree. Like listen, listen is number one and you're, you know, you're there to be their guide. You can't do it for them, but just them knowing that you are there for them as support and just holding them accountable to their own goals, whatever they may be and just following up with them and just really just following up. I mean, there's so many things, but. <laughs> what else? Does anybody else have anything? Rosanna? I think it's about empowering them to find their own way like what one of the one of the my great moments of last week was when one of my clients who was extremely shy like extremely and i never thought i'd see her participating in the group never thought i'd see any of that and when she started participating in the group and posting her own things and talking to other people and calling nutrition support and doing all of those things without me and I guided her along the way those first couple of weeks. And when she started doing it on her own, who she is is just blossoming and changing into this amazing person. Today she said, I really think I could probably be a health coach someday. And, you know, to empower somebody to that point, to go from that super shy, no confidence, nothing. She, that's what she said, nothing. That was her word when she described herself. She felt like nothing. So like thinking about being a health coach, that's, Awesome. That level of empowerment, I think that's what our job is to help them find that in themselves. Okay. Awesome. 
Melinda, are you watching the chat? Because I see it's lighting up, but I can't see what it says. Is there anything in there that we should share? Or people following in the chat? Yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit of this, you know, the same. I mean, they're great things, empowering other people. Uh, Becky wrote a dream written down with a date becomes a goal, a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan, a plan backed by action becomes reality. I, awesome. I love that so much. And yes, sharing um, pointers, being attentive. This is from Sandy and relate experiences. Awesome. Great. So the next step is be generous. What do I mean by be generous? Be generous means share this with everyone. Be generous with our program. Be generous with what you have to offer everyone and don't be afraid of it. None of us would be sitting here and there would not be over 2,000 people in our Empower Health group if we weren't being generous and offering this program and offering this program in its entirety. Um, you know, some people are, are not comfortable offering certain pieces of it and that's okay. You get into your, into your place. But if one of us wasn't here, that would be hundreds of lives that wouldn't have been touched. So don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, I like to tell people, don't be afraid to share your program with those around you because if it's not for them, then they're going to say no and that's okay. And you just move on. And that's not, it's not personal, but you know, it's, it's really, really important to just be out there and just be comfortable with it and be proud of what we're doing and what you're doing and the lives that you're changing. So that's number two. Number three, maybe it's not popping up. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. Know where you want to go. So this is where we were talking about before, where I was having you asking you where you want to be in five years. You've got to know where you want to go. Because if you, you can't get someplace without knowing where you want to go. So three and four actually really go together. Um, but, you know, in the past, we've talked about writing out your map if you're a senior coach and above. If you're not a senior coach, making a contact list. And I know we've got some brand new coaches on here who are just, just starting. And, and we'll work with you on what all of that means. But those, your map should be a guide for you. It should be your map for the month and, it should, and your contact list should be your guide if you're not to the point of making a map yet. And you should, it shouldn't just be a list that you write up and put aside. It should be something that you are looking at daily that you are going over with your mentor coach on a regular basis. Are you meeting those goals on your map? I met with a coach this morning who, you know, who we did that. We exactly checked in and said, where are you this month? These are the great goals that you have on your, on your map. What, what have you achieved so far? And she wasn't quite where she wanted to be. So, okay, so now we're going to set some goals. Of how are we going to get you there? We're only halfway through the month. We've got plenty of time to still reach those goals. But if you wait until the last day of the month or the second to last day of the month and you haven't been following your map, you're not going to get where you want to go. Number four is be consistent. Be consistent in your actions. Um, Dr. A actually told us a great story again from the, from the FIBC uh, summit. He was talking to us about a coach that was starting up, one of his coaches that was, that was just starting. And he said to her, he said, okay, what goal can you set? How many people can you commit to talking to a day? And she said, I can do 10. And he said, really? He said, 10? You can commit to 10 every single day. And she said, yeah, yeah, no problem, Dr. A, no problem, Dr. A. And he said, are you sure? He said, I want you to set a goal of what you can commit to doing on your very worst day. She's like, 10, I got it, I got it, Dr. A, 10. Two days later, she came down with the flu. And he called her up and he knew she was sick and he said, how are you feeling, whatever. Oh, I'm terrible, I can't get out of bed. Well, what's happening with you You're talking to your 10 people? I just can't do that today, Dr. A, I'm so sick. And he said, okay, when you're feeling better, we're going to reevaluate this goal. Because 10 isn't practical for every single day. He said, and he said, and we brought that goal down to, you can do one every day. He said, and if you hit 10, uh, every day except for you've still beat your goal but on that day that you're having a rough day you have the flu you have your kids sick you have whatever if you can get to that one you've hit your goal so that's really what it is is be consistent so I know we talk often about the three by three by three um, you know making three new Facebook friends posting three times on Facebook and starting three new conversations a day and for some people three by three by three is perfect and great but for some people that's just too much so a one by one by one is okay if that's your goal um, so it's really just whatever you set your goal to be, be consistent with it. And then the last one is continue to learn, continue to, for yourself, whether it's reading, whether it's watching the videos, whether it's whatever it is, continue to learn both within our program and learn for yourself. 
and, and really become an active member in Goal Getters um, and, and in Empower Health and in all of the things that we offer. Come on to the leadership calls. Come on to the Monday night coach call that comes before that, before this call. Come on to this call. And obviously, if you can't, you can catch them recorded, but be in there. Be in the Tuesday night calls. All those things that we're offering you because you're continuing to grow and better yourself. Um, so those are the top five things that I would say, if you want to grow in this business, if you are doing these five things, you're going to grow. You're going to grow leaps and bounds. So we're going to take this into what are some action steps, because I just gave you a whole bunch of things of what to do, and this is big. So how do we do these things? So I've got six action steps for you. The first one is you're going to set up weekly calls with all of your clients. If you haven't already done that, that's tremendous. I know for me personally, when I have a journey kickoff call with somebody, that first night when I'm getting them started, I immediately put them into my calendar. We set a time on my calendar that that's their time set. If they choose to back out of that call, that's their choice, but they're on my calendar until they tell me to take them off of my calendar. Every single week they get a call. Sometimes I leave a message, but they're gonna get a call. And if you don't already have them, it's never too late to pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm checking in, and then when you finish that call, let's do this again. Let's get you on my, weekly, on my weekly calendar. So it's never too late. If you've got clients that have been clients for a while, don't feel shy about doing that. Reach out to them and do that. I promise you, they will appreciate it. Second thing, set up, and I put three celebration calls, but it may be that if you're a newer coach and you don't have three clients yet, that's okay. However, you know, set your goal. But I said for people who have been around for a little bit longer, at least three celebration calls with your mentor coach. So what you should be doing is you should be reaching out to your mentor coach and introducing the, your clients to them and getting on a call so that, so that your clients have some, another voice, another person to build a relationship with and to be another voice when, when things are going on. It really sets, it makes them feel happy. Um, a lot of times celebration calls can be at the end of the first week. It can be when they've lost 10 pounds. It, it really can vary, you know, if you've got a client that's been on for a while and they're, they hit a big goal and you've never done a celebration call with them, great, get them on. We're celebrating 30 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever it is. So find some reason to introduce your clients to your coach. So this week, I want everybody to set up weekly calls with their clients and to set up at least three celebration calls with your mentor coach and message your mentor coach and tell them who those, who those celebration calls are going to be with. So your mentor coach knows that those calls are going to be coming and that those are going to be added to their calendar. Number three, share your story on social media one time this week, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, wherever you want to share it, your story. Put your story out there. Let yourself be vulnerable. Sometimes this is really hard for people. Sometimes it's easier to share other people's stories. But your story is what your Facebook friends are going to be and your so Instagram friends and your people are going to want to be listening to and seeing. Um, and so put it out there. Let yourself be vulnerable and let, yourself, and let people start asking you questions. And if you need help with this, you know, shout out to your mentor coach. We can all help you, you know, whether it's helping you get the right wording. Um, this can be in a picture. It can be in without a picture. It can be Facebook Live if you're feeling like it. And if you want to do Facebook Live and you're scared of it, ask your mentor coach to do a, to, to do a, mentor, a Facebook Live with you where they're interviewing you. Um, you know, so then you're having a conversation with people and, and you may feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, number four, submit or if you, if you haven't already done it or if you have already done it, resubmit your map or your contact li li list with your mentor coach. We're halfway through the month, so now is a great time to be checking in on where are you at, at your, with your goals. Resubmit it so that, so that we can look at it, we can help each other figure out what are the next steps to get to the goals for the end of the month. Number five, set a goal that you can achieve every single day and stick to it. That was what I was talking about before under be consistent. So whatever that is, write that goal down and again, send it to your mentor coach. I hope to be getting a whole lot of messages from my, <laughs> my, co from my coaches of, of all these things. And the last thing, the, the sixth thing is be an active member and goal getter. Share, speak. We are all here to learn from each other. We all have so much to contribute, new, old, doesn't matter how long you've been coaching. We all have amazing things to share with each other. Be active in there. Speak up. Um, the one thing that I'm going to really highly recommend is watching the video on how to do a health assessment. 
Um, Miriam Sabetsky posted that the other day and we bumped it back up to the top um, yesterday and I'll bump it up again after this call. Well, I've rewatched that video. Even if you've been a health coach for a long time and you've been doing health assessments, I went back and watched it and it was great. It was a great refresher. And then in the, in the thread underneath it, post your top takeaway. Um, for the few new coaches that are on here um, who haven't necessarily been trained to do health assessments yet, go ahead and watch it. It'll be a great, it'll be a great first piece of a training for you, um, but we can also guide you through some other, some other good videos. Um, and on top of, of that specific video, if you have not gone into Optavia Learn, hop into Optavia Learn and start, and I would say start at new coach. Even if you have been coaching for a long time and go through those videos, one a day. They're only a couple minutes long. You don't have to do them all at one time, but this is part of your continuing to learn. So those are your, your action steps. I will post them in goal getters um, so that everybody can remember them, can see them. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing from my coaches that are watching this, the responses that, you know, the posts that are coming or my messages that are going to come in with all these things. Um, and yeah. I'd love to open it up now for anybody else who has questions, have things to add, share. I'm going to stop the share of my screen. Um, does anybody have anything else to say as we wrap up? Uh, when, uh, just a quick question because I'm very, I'm brand new to this. Uh, uh, sharing number three, sharing my story on social media, and you mentioned Facebook, Facebook Live. Is that the only social media Optivia currently uses, or could be all the social media that's out there today? Any social media you would like. Um, a lot of people use either Facebook or Instagram, but anything that you would like, whatever you're comfortable where you have people watching you and, and following what you're saying. Um, yeah, go for it. Thank you. You're welcome. Check in the messages now that I can see my chat again. Um, Melinda said, if you're a little afraid, that's okay, but do it anyways. It's always gr great to get good to get a little uncomfortable. Absolutely. Uncomfortable is good. Ab uncomfortable means you're growing. Um, one, of, one of my favorite quotes, and I'll pull it out, the Dr. A said back to my FIBIC trip because this was just amazing, but one of the things that he talked about um, I want to find his exact words, is he said, you know, becoming awesome is not by accident. It's by taking a step every single day, a small step to better yourself every single day, just a little bit. If you are a little bit better tomorrow than you were today, and the next day than you were the day before, and so on, you're going to be awesome. So that's really like, I want to leave you with that thought process that we have amazing coaches on this line. We have amazing coaches in this team. And it's really you know, taking those steps to make yourself awesome and, and really grow and, and build this the way you want to build it, whatever your goals are. Um, and we're all here to help each other. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye because we went over a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, and yeah, have a great night. We will see you back next week. And I can't wait to see everybody's action steps coming in. <laughs>